Leo Rising November 2021 horoscope is all about choosing. It is about choosing relationships versus family in a very stark way and deciding what is more beneficial for your path in the long term. If you're excited to dive into this November for your rising sign, make sure that you like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so that you are always up to date with what the stars have in store for you. Hi there, I'm Marin. If we have not met yet, very nice to meet you in the most likely the final rising sign forecast I will ever be filming in this room. I mean, technically it's my apartment, but I'll be subletting it, and as far as I know, I'll be fucking across the world. So kind of, kind of a moment here in the room that I've done all these in for the past two and a half years. Um, so I am a Western astrologer. I use Hellenistic Greek astrology techniques mainly. I use whole sign houses in the tropical zodiac. So that's how I'm getting to where we're going today. We start out on the 4th with a Scorpio new moon, a very intense, very provocative new beginning. You can watch the full video on it. It will be taking place in your fourth house of home, family, or property. Looks like a very intense new beginning around your living situation or family matters. Now on the 4th to the 5th, the sun in your Scorpio fourth house will be opposing Uranus in your 10th house. Sun in the fourth house is putting a focus on the roots and intimate foundations of your life through living or family matters. And the, our Uranus Uranus in your 10th is unexpected wild card out of nowhere obstacles around career. Could be that you're changing careers very likely, especially if Uranus is close to your midheaven right now or in any planets, uh, on any planets in your 10th house of career. But it's showing that like, a focus on your home is having to be at odds with having to be flexible and responsive in your career. On the ninth, there's a Mercury-Mars conjunction in your Scorpio fourth house. Assertive, direct, very combative language that's asking for something to get done around home and family matters during this period as well. On the ninth to the twelfth, Mars in your fourth house will be squaring Saturn in Aquarius in your seventh house. This is the major dynamic for the month. It is aggression and going out after things and trying to fix issues with home and family matters, running up against a partnership, a committed relationship that is wanting to slow you down or say, whoa, 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 what are we thinking here? Caution. Also, from the 15th to the 16th, the sun in your fourth house is squaring Jupiter in your seventh house. So your family situation is allowing you to get closer and have more opportunities with this committed relationship, either romantic or business or friends. But at the same time, it is both great growing and slowing things down. On the 16th to the 18th, Mars in your fourth house is opposite Uranus in your 10th house, activating this trying to do things at home that comes with being very all over the place in your career and navigating those two extremes. And on another note, a nice note, Venus in your Capricorn sixth house is trining Uranus in your Taurus 10th house, which is improvements or enjoying the process of taking care of your health through diet exercise or curing health issues alongside maybe coworkers or your pets and those things being like positive events in your life right now is helping you be on top of things in your career. That like the more that you manage your projects, you manage your health, you manage things you have to take care of, it helps you stay on top of these wild card events in your career. On the 19th, there's a full moon in your Taurus 10th house, an ending, a culmination, an exposure, a high, like letting go. This is the end of a chapter in your career. Looks like you could be like, I'm done with this shit. Like, really, I'm done. We start to end the month on the 27th with a Sun Mercury Kazemi in your Sagittarius 5th house. Sun Mercury is a download of information in your 5th house of romance or creativity, which could be a big realization before next month when we do get into the more exact eclipses that are taking place in your fifth house of creativity. On the 28th to 30th, finally, there's a Mars-Neptune trine between your fourth and eighth houses. So what you're going after with your family, this can sound really weird. Like, I'm not meaning mafia. I'm meaning, like, maybe you're redecorating your home. Maybe you're dealing with an annoying parent and you're sorting shit out or a child. So like doing, solving that issue is actually helping you achieve financial freedom with Neptune in your eighth house. It's helping you invest and see your investments grow. This could deal with like home mortgage, uh, flipping a house. I think it, I have a feeling this deals more with like a house and your partner is kind of like, I don't know if that's the right decision, but like, I'll help you out, like that kind of thing. If you have any thoughts, predictions, or comments you would like to leave below, feel free to. I love hearing from you, and uh, yeah, let's move on to the tarot now. 
We have the Eight of Swords, which is someone who is bound up around a bunch of swords. It is usually the paralysis of indecision. Like you have so many options, you don't know where to start, which I think is beyond resonant. And a lot of you were like, oh, that's exactly what's happening to me. I think you're being indecisive about the home family matter and all these perspectives are both eye-opening and indecision paralysis provoking. If you enjoyed this, I would appreciate a like, a comment, a subscribe. Helps out in the algorithm nowadays, which is weird and sometimes on my side and sometimes not. So all the help we can get, I will sit here uh, reminding you. Some people say smash the like button. That sounds a little aggressive for me. Say, uh, feel free to uh, tap, tap, <laughs> whatever. Uh, I'll see you next month wherever I am. So take care.